ETS, and XO, two juggernauts in the industry. Selling a combined 13 million sales in just the last two years, now is the two most popular boy groups. Their demographics are a safe representation of K-pop boy groups as a whole. So of the millions of fans, who actually listens to BTS and XO? For XO, 25%, only a quarter of their audience, is male. The other 75% being female. And the same seems to hold true for BTS. 24% of ARMY were male, while a clear majority, 76%, were female. However, the age distribution does vary a bit. For XO, 32% were 10 to 19 year olds, 35% were 20 year olds, 12% were 30 year olds, 15% were 40 year olds, and 6% were over 50. A pretty normal and average age distribution. As suspected, most of the audience were teens and young adults. Moving on to BTS. 24% were 10 to 19 year olds, 26% were 20 year olds, 19% were 30 year olds, and hold on, this doesn't seem right. 27% were 40 to 49 years old. Whoa, over a quarter of BTS listeners were in their 40s. All right, someone explain this to me. Where are my 40 year olds at? I'm looking at you, Randall Park. All right guys, so we're gonna be looking at and analyzing some different K-pop demographics. Now, we won't be going over all the groups because this will turn out to be like a three hour video. So I just took some select groups that had interesting stats and deviated from the norm. Now, if you think BTS and EXO's distribution was pretty whack, you need to check out Seventeen. The 13 member group from Pledis is one of the heaviest skewed I've seen with 82% being female and 18% being male. The age distribution seems to have two significant outliers, with 46% being teens and 23% being 40 year olds. Which makes me think, what about 17 resonates with teens and 40 year olds that wouldn't resonate with 20 and 30 year olds? Hmm. Now let's bring this back to a group that you might be familiar with. Big Bang. A group loved by all, boy, girl, old, young, and the numbers reflect that an almost perfectly equal distribution, with 50% being male and 50% being female. And as Big Bang was in the height of their career in the mid-2010s, they lack teenage fans with 15% being 10 to 19 year olds, an overwhelmingly large majority, 51% being 20 to 29 year olds, 15% in their 30s, 12% in their 40s, and 6% over 50. The Big Bang brand and the Big Bang sound has always had a very wide appeal. Their strong, up-tempo hip-hop sound, which gave Big Bang that mature appeal, loved by all. Those were some of the boy group demographics, but how do the girl groups measure up? Blackpink and Red Velvet, debuting in 2016 and 2014 respectively, they rose to be two of the biggest girl groups in the industry. And according to their demographics, Red Velvet is 37% male and 63% female. Similarly, Blackpink's listeners are 39% male and 61% female. Pretty clear majority of female listeners. 32% were 10 to 19 year olds, 32% were 20 year olds, 11% were 30 year olds, 19% were 40 year olds, and a small 5% were over 50. Red Velvet had a similar pattern with 37%, 32%, 8%, 18%, and 5%. And although these numbers may seem strange, they are actually an accurate representation of girl group stands as a whole. K-pop is very much dominated by the female demographic. Similarly, as it is with most pop groups and pop music all around the world, it is a scene heavily populated by teen presence. With Blackpink and Red Velvet, 32 and 37% of their audience were teenagers. Which got me wondering, is there actually a group that has more male fans than girl fans? <clears throat> Introducing twice, Asia's girl group. And as some would argue, the biggest girl group in the world. A group so popular, they've sold nearly 7 million albums. And from teenage boys to Korean soldiers in the military, twice is infamous for their staggering amount of fanboys. <laughs> These fanboys represent 59% of Twice's fans, while only 41% of Once's were female. And the ages seem pretty normal, with the majority being teens and young adults. Now, if you think that's strange, 
Here is Eyes One, the successor to the highly successful group IOI. Eyes One is the monster rookie group that has been shattering records ever since their debut. And although Twice is known all over the world for their fanboys, Eyes One is a completely different entity on its own. Males represented an incomprehensible 79% of the audience, with females only being 21%. Whew, that's a lot of fanboys. 32% were teens, 36% in their 20s, 23% in their 30s, 8% in their 40s, and 1% over 50. Now, not only do they have a much higher majority male, but also an older distribution than the last three groups, with nearly 60% being 20 to 39 years old. Luna, the most ambitious project in K-pop history. The girls of the month, the Avengers of the K-pop world. 12 girls brought together in one group over a period of nearly two years. So how does their audience compare with the other groups? The more girls in a group, the more fanboys, right? Twice had nine, Eyes One had 12, well, Blackpink only has four, that's why they have so little. And it's true, Luna had an overwhelmingly male minority, representing only 29% of orbits. On the other hand, 71% were outstandingly female. 43% were teenagers, 44% were 20 year olds, 10% were 30 year olds, 3% were 40 year olds, and a measly 1% were over 50. Now, Luna is very different than your average K-pop group, and I made a whole entire video talking about why they're different and what makes them unique if you wanna check them out. Part of what makes Luna different is their message and their values. Luna makes it a point to stand for feminism and breaking from gender roles. Many women view Luna as champions for their values and heroines that break social barriers, with Luna pretty much for all intents and purposes becoming a symbol for equality, justice, and diversity. Now, it makes you think, did I just make this whole video just to promote Luna? Hey guys, I hope you like my video, and as always, subscribe. No, seriously, subscribe. And remember, buy the carol on iTunes. <laughs>